Nicholson. Um, great to see you, and thanks very much for agreeing to do this. Um, the Female First initiative uh, is very exciting, got a very positive response downstairs. Tell me a little bit about sort of the origins of the idea, the research that you did and how it came into existence. Yeah, we did an issue of Days and a whole sort of campaign online called Girls Rule, and we did that a year and a half ago with Lupita Nyong'o on the cover as our kind of poster girl, and that was the same month that she won the best Oscar for 12 Years a Slave. What happened was we started um, doing talks and events around that theme, and one of the kind of key stats that kept popping up was this massive gender disparity. So this issue was around female empowerment, but it was also about the total diversity issue with lesbian, gay, trans, um, and by rights and that is so important to our readers 70 percent of whom are women but also you know and our viewers online and also just a topic that is so much in the consciousness of youth um, this whole issue of gender diversity is paramount but actually the diverse the 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 the, the, it, the, the imbalance in you know male to female um, in cinema is unbelievable. When we started seeing that, you know, only four women have ever been nominated for a, for for an Oscar in Best Director. Only one woman's ever won Best Director as an Oscar. Um, Twenty, you know, um, ninety-five percent of Hollywood directors are men. It's like, hang on a minute. How 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 is this not changed? It seems incredibly severe as a statistic. So we started kind of hosting talks. It's at, uh, film festivals and places like South By um, with directors but also producers and writers and other people in the industry and we started looking at surveys and started connecting to the industry and um, yeah, what we found was that the big kind of barrier, the big kind of cliff face when there was a, when the, 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 the drop off was most severe was at first and second feature stage um, and there's many cultural reasons why that, um, why that was the case. Um, and so, you know, it's been a grassroots initiative for me. It's been something that has kind of on its own steam been happening. My team, um, my, my digital team, my, my journalists have kind of been leading it as an investigation and as a question to the industry. And the response has been phenomenal. So it's really been kind of self-sustaining as a campaign. And Female Firsts really focused on, 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 on cinema and film um, out of the whole girls rule, girls rule thing. So, you know, we're here today to, to say, we can't do this alone. We're here today to say, you know, we've taken it this far there is an incredible amount of goodwill. There's an incredible urgency to create change. There's an incredible passion from our readers and from the industry. More than goodwill, there's a kind of impatience to sort of get this, you know, get this changed. But people don't know how to engage. And we're offering a, you know, a, a way, one way, out of what I hope will become many different ways that this will help influencing, influence change and, 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 and cultural diversity. How, how, do you, how do you think the absence of women and, and other sort of diverse directors is impacting the kind of stories that get told? Really interesting question. So Sundance Institute did a report on this and they actually did an incredible analytic study on it and they found that male directors will have a massive bias towards having male role models in, in their lead, females, vice versa. So you can see just from that statistic um, the different kind of um, stereotypes that end up appearing on the screens. But look, you know, our cinemas and, and the screens, the, the global cinema industry, it's, it's the place where you can have the greatest cultural impact. It's like, you know, it's the most globalized art form, it's the most impactful art form. And there have been great anomalies emerging. You know, there's been, there's been powerful female role models in Hunger Games, for instance, or we've seen Elizabeth Banks now with Pitch Perfect 2 smash the record for first opening week of, or weekend of, of any 
film. And those anomalies are brilliant and um, they will lead to change, but I think there's much more endemic, systemic, um, cultural factors which kind of just, you know, don't let women or girls at a very young age see that there is a potential for them both to join the, the film industry or in the storytelling to be able to relate to a wider range of, of role models for them. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that there are still some statistics out there about how few movies pass the, and forgive me if I butcher this, but I think it's called the Bechtel test, which says that in, in order to appeal to women, a movie has to have two female characters who talk to each other about something other than the male protagonist of the movie. And, you know, women's roles tend to still, I think, revolve around a male protagonist in a absolutely, lot of movies, and that absolutely. has to change, surely. There are male directors producing films with, 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 with strong and interesting and diverse characters, um, female characters, and thank God, because otherwise maybe half the audience would not be up for going to the cinema, you know. Um, but, you know, that's, that helps, but I think really what we're talking about here is just a massive gender inequality. And, you know, as a, as a publisher and as a, you know, as a, as a father of a 12-year-old daughter, you know, it's just cultural diversity is what DAZED stands for. Um, cultural diversity across all issues relating to gender, relating to ageism, relating to race. You know, progress is about, you know, creating opportunity for change to happen in places where there's just so much backward thinking and prejudice and it's unbelievable to see that in the 21st century with all the tools and technology that we have that something as you know close to us as the film industry is that undiverse gender wise it's kind of shocking when you wake up and see the facts you're like hang on a minute that's just bonkers it seems to me, though, to be a, an incredibly complex problem, right? There, there are challenges at every level of the process, so it's difficult to get financing from traditional backers. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons it's difficult to get financing is because there is at least a perception that perhaps these movies won't have the, you know, box office. You hit the, I think you hit the nail on the head, perception. Perception within the industry, perception from outside the industry, um, and like I said, these anomalies keep coming up to smash the perception and yet the inherent cultural kind of endemic prejudices are still there. And then you have an Elizabeth Banks and then you have, you know, etc, etc. And it's still, that's not enough. So, yeah, it's really complicated, um, but it starts from... You know, it, it starts from looking at it, from analysing it, and also putting it back onto the industry. And I think, you know, we just got some incredible texts. I put my number up on the on the screen. I said people text me. I got texts through already from from um, directors, producers, um, film festivals in India. In and I'm telling you, in 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 one in less than a minute, I had. India, Australia and the Middle East on the phone saying we want to be a part of this. I saw the I saw the hands go up in the room, I saw the phones come out when the number went up on the screen. I mean obviously I think this resonates with people. Um, you know, it's interesting to me, we, a lot of the great work we've seen in our awards competition over the last year or so has revolved around women's issues, whether it's the Procter & Gamble, um, Always Like a Girl campaign, we saw a domestic violence campaign by Avon in Bulgaria that blew me away, a lot of really terrific stuff. Brands, obviously, have a tremendous interest in engaging with and empowering women and, and girls. How can they get involved in this initiative and what can you promise or deliver to them in exchange for their support? Exactly. So, you know, Female First is a fund and it's an initiative. So two things take part. One is that a number of films will get funded and a, production, a percentage of the production will get funded and those films will gain mentorship and they will gain um, international distribution. And they are with first and second time feature film makers. Um, the brands will be able to be involved in the association with that and they'll be able to be involved with 
the events around that, the mediation of it, the conversation around it, and also with the talent that are involved in it, which I know is a really, really, really important because it's bigger than just those films. Those films make a difference because statistically they will change the cut on the gender, but the issue is bigger than just getting those films made. And like you said, it's very complicated. The other thing that we're doing is continuing the um, engagement with um, the you know, with, 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 with young women who want to be a part of the industry globally. And like I said, in one minute, we've had the Middle East, we've had India, we've had Australia on the phone, and global brands can get involved in being sponsors, partners, being able to bring their expertise, bring their software, their hardware, their, um, their you know, their infrastructure, as well as their money so it's to not supporting. Just as a check and... No, 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 no. We're interested in brands that really believe in the long term of this, and brands that we feel obviously, you know, have an alignment and care as passionately as we do. But this is about, you know, I tell you what, the big is the big issue. Is actually the industry is going to be the hard, It's going to be hardest for the industry to be the game changer, because of the of the thing that you said, perception. There's a perception within the industry that women can't handle bigger budgets, that they can't handle the kind of those things. Are, those things are endemic. Brands putting capital and the support of their amplification, their PR, their ability to kind of scale um, the 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 um, awareness of a project, a particular film, that is the game changer. That is the difference between the um, film industry waking up and seeing that the consumer is ready because the film industry will be risk adverse and what brands can do is they can put, they can, they can, they can, they can, they can, they can be ahead of the curve, or just that little bit ahead of the curve, because I can tell you the waves are already broken. My readers are telling me, you know, the data I'm picking up from the, from the ground is telling me that there is a passion and, 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 a, and an excitement and a, and a kind of impatience about this happening. So I think the brand capital and brand, vo you know, the brand amplification aspect in it is a critical game changer because that's the extra financing it's needed to put on the table, put the money on the table and it will change, it will make the industry perception change. They can lead the way in this. Brands can lead the way in this. No, it's, it's and we've seen all of that disruption. Whenever that kind of disruption happens, it's exciting for everyone. It broadens the, the whole playing field. You know, this isn't about women replacing male, female directors replacing male directors. I mean, that is so backward thinking. This is about broadening the types of movies that are being made and that is for the good of absolutely every human being on the planet. It feels like your timing is just propitious on this I think um, you know we're, we're entering an era where brands are creating their own content and this in a way is is almost the ultimate expression of that so I think it's a terrific initiative I'm sure you'll get immense feedback uh, both from the session downstairs, hopefully from this interview My as well. If the doesn't melt down, we'll be able to get back to everybody. Sounds Thank great. you so Thank much, you. I really appreciate really. it.